Hi, welcome to WFP Reviews, looking at classic British cinema. This time, we explore David Lean's 1946 version of Great Expectations and why it remains a favorite with critics and viewers. We'll briefly go over the story without spoilers, look at performances, and cover why Lean made the film and some production notes. As we get started, I'll ask you to please support this kind of content by clicking on the subscribe button in the bottom right corner. Charles Dickens' Great Expectations is one of the world's most popular novels, and even though David Lean had not read the book, he decided to film it after seeing a stage production with his wife, Kay Walsh. It would be the first of two famous Dickens movies that Lean directed, along with a follow-up Oliver Twist. Lean had just finished Brief Encounter, his fourth collaboration with Noel Coward, and was looking to branch out independently. As Lean himself said, quote, I'm afraid I did them, more or less, as a change from the Noel Coward thing. The movie would mark an important change for Lean by placing a greater emphasis on visual style, something that would come to define him as one of the world's most celebrated directors. A bit more on that later. Set in the early mid-1800s, Great Expectations tell the story of Pip and his remarkable path from apprentice blacksmith to London gentleman. The film stars John Mills, who also narrates as Pip, and it episodically chronicles his life. Typical of Dickens, it looks at rich and poor and uses coincidences and many surprise turns for dramatic effect. It also deploys remarkable supporting characters that have become iconic. It struck me that Dickens had hit on the same formula used much later in successful TV sitcoms. Take a likable everyday lead character and surround him with memorable eccentrics. The film opens with Pip as a young orphan living with his bullying sister and Joe, a kindly blacksmith. Very quickly, Pip has two encounters that will largely shape his destiny. First, visiting his mother's grave site, Pip meets a burly convict who has escaped from a prison ship. Keep still, you little devil, or I'll cut your throat. No, sir, no. Tell us your name. Quick. Pip. Pip is kind and steals food for the desperate prisoner, but the man is soon caught and shipped to Australia, apparently out of Pip's life. Lean's direction in these early scenes set the film's strong visual tone, with rugged marshy coastlines, menacing ancient trees, and Gothic church graveyards. Next, young Pip very ably played by Anthony Wager, is summoned to a decrepit mansion. Here he meets the extraordinary pair of Miss Havisham and her young protege Estella. Spurned at the altar years before, Havisham is quite mad. Still wearing her bridal gown, she now plots revenge by grooming the beautiful Estella to break men's hearts. And she succeeds, as Pip falls under Estella's spell at their first meeting. Presiding over a cobwebbed, mouse-infested wedding feast, Havisham, played by Martita Hunt, is one of Dickens' most unforgettable creations, and Lean's production does her and the setting full credit. As critic Roger Ebert noted, Havisham and her decaying home must have helped inspire Billy Wilder's Sunset Boulevard, with this aging film queen in gloomy exile. In our film, as Pip reaches manhood, he gets a mysterious benefactor who guarantees great expectations, the wealth to become a gentleman. As Pip moves through his new path, he has adventures and learns truths about himself, and surprising revelations about others in his life. In a movie with many great scenes, one of the best is Pip's confrontation with the truth about his benefactor. The story has steered both Pip and the audience towards certain assumptions, and it's amazing to see John Mills' eyes as a very different truth finally dawns on him. And, money aside, Pip's greatest expectation is that he will one day be with the ever-distant Estella. Just how Lean resolves that relationship differs from Dickens, but we'll discuss that later in our wrap-up. The film was an instant hit, with the third best British box office in 1947. It got kudos from The Guardian and retained high praise from later critics like Ebert and Pauline Kael. As touched on earlier, much of the acclaim was for how great it looks. On this film, veteran lean collaborator Ronald Neem worked on the screenplay, but he was replaced behind the camera by Guy Green. 
it was a good move. Lean and green created a visual melodrama that often looks like a horror film packed with gothic images. The sets evoke German expressionism or Universal Studios monster movies. Green deservedly won an Oscar for the best black and white cinematography, while a second Oscar came for production and set design. Next, the film has some great on-screen talent with its character actors and future acting royalty. Great Expectations features the first major film role for a young stage actor named Alec Guinness. He played Pip's London roommate, Mr. Pocket. Guinness had appeared in the theater version that had inspired Lean to do the film and was very glad to get the work. He'd go on to act in six major films with Lean, including his Oscar-winning performance in Bridge on the River Kwai. As always, John Mills is solid in the lead role, but as an everyman, he's sometimes upstaged by the more colorful supporting characters. The cast includes baritone-voiced Francis L. Sullivan. He holds court as Mr. Jaggers, Pip's imposing advisor, and a lawyer who collects the death masks of his former clients. Always commanding, Sullivan had already played Jaggers on screen in 1934 and later played Mr. Bumble in Lean's Oliver Twist. Jean Simmons, in her first major role, shines as young Estella. She's pretty and aloof and shows the presence that would make her a star by the 50s. The adult Estella is played by Valerie Hobson. She makes Estella genteel and elegant, but she lacks the playfully imperious quality that Simmons brought to the role. One of the few criticisms of the film is this casting. Playing Miss Havisham, Martita Hunt has a quiet, mad dignity. Hunt didn't enjoy working with Lean. She felt she didn't get enough support. But she creates sympathy for Havisham, which helps mask the character's true intentions. Finally, kudos to Finley Curry. He's a powerful presence as Magwitch, the mysterious convict that touches Pip's life. Of course, the film's core strength is Dickens' wonderful story. Naturally, the movie condenses the novel for its two-hour running time, but Lean made few changes except to tinker with the ending. However, that is something Dickens had done himself. And here we enter spoiler territory, so be warned. The original serialized version of Great Expectations had a sober ending, with an older Pip briefly meeting Estella after she remarried when her first husband died. For its major publication, Dickens was persuaded to write a more hopeful yet ambivalent finale when Pip's beloved is a widow when they meet. In this film, just as Pip lets in the sunlight by ripping down decaying curtains, Lean chooses a happy reunion as Pip and Estella leave Satis house forever. Naturally, some purists objected, but the film's optimistic ending was generally embraced. It's also interesting that Lean had waited for the end of World War II to film Great Expectations, and perhaps he felt giving Pip a brighter future was more in keeping with the times. There have been many adaptations of Great Expectations over the years, from silent films to TV movies, but Lean's film remains the definitive version. Today, the movie is part of the Criterion Collection, which you can stream, buy, or get from better library collections. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment and subscribe, and come back soon to Waltz Flicks Picks.